Welcome to Inside the Mind, a podcast hosted by myself, Jennifer Forster, and my beautiful co-host, Ali May. We're excited to be here, diving into edgy, raw, and relatable conversations woven together with mind-blowing questions that will shake up your model of the world, expand your thinking, unravel your beliefs, tease apart your patterns, and walk you to the very edges of everything you've ever believed about yourself. As NLP trainers, coaches, entrepreneurs, we'll be traversing the topics of business, relationships, money, family, spirituality, leadership, and personal growth, all through the discerning lens of NLP, ancient teachings, and a healthy sprinkling of womanly wisdom. One thing we believe to be true is that if we want a different outcome, we must be willing to ask a different question. And the answers to those questions are always inside the mind. Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mind. My name is Jennifer Four Star. (laughs) Or Five Star. Or Five Star. I laughed as I said that because I said it like Five Star, (laughs) Jennifer Four Star. It's actually Four Star, but it sounds like Four Star, which is how I became Five Star. I'm just laughing at how I said that. And this is my extraordinary co-host, the stunning, my bestie in epic shit, Ali Mae. Today, I am so fucking pumped. This is oh one of my favorite topics. And I think I say that a gazillion times. I love a lot of topics. This one for me is just, oh, let's go. We are diving into masculine and feminine energy today. We are diving into the roles that we play in relationship. There are so many high achieving driven women that are emasculating their men. I was one of them that are emasculating their men without even realizing it. And we're going to dive deep into that. We're also going to talk about something that Jen had downloaded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to share how I connected to my inner king and queen and why I believe that inside of every human being, there is an inner king and queen. And when we can understand how they co-create our experiences and honour their magic really beautifully. Oh, my gosh. Life just changed on its head for me when I discovered this. And, And it began during when I first went to my first Goddess Day, which is a movement Ali founded and created. And that was spicy for me to say yes to going to a goddess day it felt gosh it just went against everything that oh it just felt really edgy the word goddess jarred me it was like you know what as if I get to call myself a goddess as if other people get to call themselves a goddess you know what the heck is a goddess anyway and that event was bloody amazing it was extraordinary the cherry pie was the was the winner on the day However, I I was there with other women who are now such close friends of mine and I never met any of them because I went, I kept to myself, I didn't, I I guess if I was to reflect, I had some real woundings around uh, relationships with other women, which only, of course, knowing what I know now, just reflects on the relationship that I had with myself and my own inner queen I was, re- I guess I was really stuck in my masculine energy, if I'm really reflecting on it. And that, I think, is how, as a woman, I may have played a role. My favourite question, what role did I play in this? I may have played a role in, in many ways, emasculating the men in my life. And we do it unconsciously. Very unconsciously. So beautiful. All right, I'm going to rewind us back because Jen's going to share a beautiful poem that downloaded for her. He has a metaphor. Yeah, I'll tell the story of it when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. It came through at the... At the Women's Wisdom Immersion. That I was at. Yeah, Yeah. it was so beautiful. So Jen did a six-week program with me after Goddess Day and really dove deep into the masculine and feminine, which I'm going to start off with. And then I went to... uh, Jen ran a Muniki Rights... Well, yeah. how did I go from being this is this I'm just getting the awareness of how profound and how full 360 I have gone on this because the first thing was with you doing the goddess day which was like the most excruciating thing for me to lean in on to go to becoming I'm this only came up the other day 
I'm a registered womb keeper now and I initiate other women in, with the Muniki rites of the womb, other rites as well, but the rite of the womb and and have activated the womb wisdom in almost 20 women now. So, so how did that even, oh, I'm just going, what? Oh, oh. my God, it's so, na- it's so who I am now, but. It's not who I was. It's not. And I was your first woman you, you initiated. You oh, my the gosh. Woman that I, I forgot oh, about me it, too. Ellie. <gasps> and this is the second time this has come up in the last two days about the Muniki rights for you and running. Okay, cool. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Whoa. I feel like there's some people out there that uh, I've look at the yes. Christmas. <laughs> so great. All right. So going back to the, some basics here. Mm. So I'm going to blanket overview this. And just do a little bit of an intro here on the masculine and feminine energy. Most of us high achieving women, Jen shared that she was like this. I was the same as well. We often live from our masculine energy. And it's quite strange to me that we feel like we live that way. or We are masculine when we are innately feminine anyway. I think we're just not sure as women how to be in the feminine the feminine we just are we are feminine anyway so masculine and feminine energy we have a cycle every woman regardless of whether you have a bleed whether you like at your uh, period whether you have had a hysterectomy whether you have um whether you're on contraception whatever the case for you we all have a cycle and our cycle starts day one of our bleed if you're not on a bleed it will start on around about a full moon or a new moon for you we have day one usually is the day of our bleed and the day before our next bleed that's our cycle completion of the cycle in our cycle we experience blanket overview again we experience two weeks of feminine energy and two weeks of masculine energy so the two weeks of feminine energy are the week before our bleed and the week after our bleed if you don't have a bleed you're going to work with the moon cycles but i'm going to keep this very simple for now the two weeks of masculine energy are the second week and the third week of our cycle. And that's when we go into our ovulation, when we want to have babies as well. That's when we're queen of freaking everything, when we just want to get shit done. Now, the other two weeks, the feminine, is when we are wanting to hibernate. It's when we're in that gentle space and high-achieving women aren't real good at being. We're very good at doing, which is masculine, but we're not very good at being until we learn. I'm really good at being now. (laughs) Very good at being now. And it was a pendulum swing. And I see this a lot. I've run my six-week program multiple times, which is second time it's come up for me in a week. That will be coming back. It might be something here we... Oh, yes. What? Hold on to your knickers, ladies. I think there's a six-week program with the Muniki rights attached in there. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Culminating in a, in a come together in it's the day. <gasps> <laughs> we just have it our own download. This is what happens for us. This is how the podcast was started by a conversation just similar to that. Oh, we, and we trust. Look at the spidey Ooh, tingles going on. I know. Oh, my so God. All the way good. down to. <gasps> so great. Okay. Next. So. <clears throat> Circling back on this, <laughs> uh, in so I've run multiple six-week programs. I've worked with so many women one-on-one, been running the NLP trainings as well. And the common thread for me is seeing women be very good at doing but not being very good at being. Then when they begin to learn about feminine energy, when they begin to learn about that side of themselves, I often see the pendulum swing. So we can go from high-achieving women just on autopilot all the time. I experienced beautiful burnout because I was on all the time. And then pendulum swing way over to just being and not wanting to do jack shit. When we're in the being, it's really hard to run a business if we're business women. Mm. It's very hard to run a business in just the being. And so then I see this equilibrium happen where we come into alignment of a balance between our masculine and feminine. And that's the really beautiful sweet spot. And when Jen's going to dive into her piece, you're going to get another layer on that. For me, what I love, and this is my interpretation of what Jen's going to share, is that we have both within us. We have the masculine and the feminine. It's learning how to work with both of those together. It's learning how to, it's understanding when we're in the doing, get shit done, and when we're in the being phase and honoring both. Why? Why would we want to do that? Well, so we avoid burnout, adrenal fatigue, um, PMS, yeah, chronic fatigue, being, yeah, PMS is such a big one for women, um, pain in our body when we're due for our period or when we have our period, when we can honor the balance in our being, then we experience less of those things. Now, I was in a medicine journey once and I had this, this piece around before the medicine journey, I had this piece around wanting to be held by the masculine. 
And at the time, I thought it was wanting to be held by a man. And so I go into my journey and the facilitator actually came and wrapped his arms around me and held me while I was in my journey. It was so beautiful. And I got the support of the masculine. And I was like, cool, like this feels really beautiful. I desire more of this in my life. Huh. The download that came after that, though, was that I can hold myself. And most women are not holding themselves. They're expecting somebody else or something else to do it for them. When we understand our feminine and masculine energy, when we can work with both, then we're able to beautifully support ourselves without needing or feeling like we need anything else external to ourselves. And that's a beautiful place to be in. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm reliving so much stuff right now that I had no idea was going to come up in this conversation. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited as well because of the synchronicity of some behind the scenes stuff here that's come through for us. So that was me, Ali. That was exactly who I was. I want to touch on, you know, when you said the equilibrium, my training company is called Equanimous. Equanimous Training and Coaching, and the Equanimous just means evenness of mind. To me, mind and body is connected because we have neurotransmitters that bathe every cell in our body. So there's no distinction to me between mind and body. It's all one. And so evenness of mind for me absolutely encapsulates the evenness of it's bringing the pendulum to a stop, you know, over here, all the way over here in the masculine energy that's not it. We can't be there 24-7. But we equally cannot be over in the feminine energy 24-7, which is the opposite side for the pendulum. It's it's getting that pendulum to, to come to a complete and beautiful, beautiful stop so that we can balance and bring in the, the ebbs and the flows of both of those exquisite energies that each serve a purpose. And that purpose, what's it going to do for us? Well, firstly, it's going to have us feel more empowered as a woman. If this, and speaking direct to the women here on this, and for you men listening to this, you will get something for your women and an understanding around your woman here. Mm-hmm. So what does it do? It supports us to feel great within ourselves. And what does that do? Well, that ripples out. It supports us to become better mothers. It supports us to become I don't even like the word better. It supports us to have greater relationships with our children. It supports us to have a greater sex life with ourselves first and foremost, and then with the people that we choose to person, people we choose to have in our life. It then supports us in business. When we know how to work with our feminine and masculine energy in unison, Mm. we're able to expand more in business because we spend less time in being burnt out, frustrated, spinning plates, and we spend more time in when we're in our masculine energy getting the shit done that needs to be done so we can give ourselves the spaciousness to recharge when we're in that feminine energy. Every part of our life, like this changed my whole life. I, I remember Changed so, mine. Oh, so, I mean, gosh, I went on to become a womb keeper. It's so, my goodness. And I, yeah. just to, to give clarity here, I haven't had a bleed since I was 45. I went into early menopause. That's a whole nother story to talk about how that happened So, you know, up until I was about 53 when I did that program with you and I'm 56 now, I had no relationship or correlation, connection, anything to my cycle because I believed I didn't have one. We, men and women, we all have a cycle because we are cyclical beings. We are not separate from nature. We are part of this expanding universe that is cyclical in nature. We're not separate to that. Neither of us, men or women, we all have a cycle. So I wanted to share that because if if we've got a lot of women who listen to our podcast in the 45 to 59 age bracket, and if you are listening to this and go, well, I no longer have a bleed, this doesn't apply to me, I'm here to tell you it absolutely bloody well does apply to you and to me. And it is a game changer when you can know yourself and your seasons and know your feminine energy and your masculine energy and move with it instead of against it, it is a fucking game changer. It is a game changer. And what we'll do in our show notes, we will drop two of my favourite books into the show notes show section. Note, yeah. uh, we'll put links there. One of them is Code Red by Lisa Lister. That book is my number one recommended book to all women on the planet. And the second book is Pussy uh, by Regina. I don't know how you pronounce it. Thomas Hauser. Is it Thomas Hauser? That's how I, I say so. it too. Or Thomas Hauer or something like that. Um, Mama Gina, she's got um, a school in New York. Those two books 
game changers. Mm-hmm. If you want to dive further into this, I mean, we just give you a snippet mm-hmm. here. If you want to dive further into this, that's a good place to start. And also if, you know, if it feels good for you and you're all like getting excited about potentially doing a, a course or program with Jen and I, please send us a message and we'll pop you on the list to let you know when all the details are out for that. Mm-hmm. So it's, something's coming. So, so, so this metaphor that I want to share with you all now, I, it's literally, I've just pulled it out and dusted it off. I've not really shared it anywhere apart from the women who were at my women's wisdom immersions last year, but it was at Ali's, the very first one I did. And it was five minutes, literally five minutes before the whole day was going to be closed out. And out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, this was a channel download. I invited everyone to close down their eyes and I didn't even know what was going to happen. I just said, I literally just said, can I just have you all just close down your eyes for a moment? And I'm going to read you um, because I ended up putting it onto paper, but I didn't read this. This story came through, this metaphor came through as a channeled download. And at the end, when everybody opened their eyes, because I closed down my eyes too, when everyone closed down their eyes, I closed down my eyes too. And I just shared what came through and and I'll read you what came through. But everybody thought I had read it, that it was something that I had prepared and it was not something I had prepared. It's magic. I thought Jen had prepared it too. It is divine. And this is, I haven't changed it in, in any real way. This is literally how I remember it. Um, It's called The Queen and the King, and it's the story of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, and it goes like this. It was on a day not unlike this one, on a body of land not unlike where we are today, that there once lived a queen and a king. No one knows where they came from or when they arrived, only that they were not there on an inward breath, and yet there they were on an outward breath. For many years, the body of land on which the queen and king dwelled was harmonious, peaceful, fruitful, thriving, and abundant with an effortless grace. The queen would spend her days floating, dreaming, and enchanting whatever and whomever she met. She was mesmerizing and was equally mesmerized by the beauty and abundance of the lands. In fact, the more mesmerized she was by what she saw, the more mesmerizing she became, especially to the king who tended the lands. It was the most divine union. The queen would dream and the king would create her dreams. It could not be any other way as it was not the king's purpose to dream and it was not the queen's purpose to create. Together, they were both the sound of a heart beating and the no sound in between the beat. Together, they were both the flow and that which flowed. Together, they were both the effortlessness of being and the effort of doing. Until one day, a noise only the king could hear that came from everywhere and nowhere imprisoned the queen into a glass bubble. To the king, she simply vanished, and in time, so did his memory of her. Though for the queen, she was always able to see through the glass and never once lost sight of the king. The queen continued to dream as was her purpose, though with no one to witness them, they would dissolve into the air and within the glass bubble. The king continued to create as was his purpose, though with no direction from the dreams of the queen, the king's efforts were misguided, directionless, and left the king exhausted and disenchanted. Each day the king would continue to create empty, hollow and dreamless lands, for it was all that he knew how to do. Eventually, on a warm afternoon, in sheer exhaustion, the king fell to the ground right where the queen was imprisoned by that cursed glass bubble. And whilst he had long forgotten her and could not see her, she had never forgotten or could unsee him. In all the years since the curse, the king had never stopped or been still, for it was not his nature. He lay there completely spent and she began calling to him. As he lay there questioning his purpose, he cocked his head and the queen knew he'd heard her. She called and called and called. As her voice became louder and clearer to his ears, suddenly the glass bubble shattered. The curse had been broken by the sound that only stillness can make. The queen and the king were reunited and the lands once again flourished with effortless grace. 
and no curse would separate them again for the king would always know how to listen for the dreams of the queen in stillness and silence. Mm. Makes me want to cry when I read it. So beautiful. Mm. So beautiful humans. Masculine and feminine energy. Yeah, I think if we go into the, like, to give some awareness here on the emasculating side, yeah, I reckon we dive into that. Yeah, let's go. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. So something that's very easy for us high-achieving females to do, and maybe just women in general, is to emasculate our men. What does that mean? Well, it means that we grab their balls and we put them in our handbag and that's where they stay. And what happens with the man? The man flips into the feminine energy. The woman, she flips into the masculine energy. And when that happens, there is an imbalance in our relationship. This is if we're in a heterosexual relationship. When you're in female-female, I guess... Yeah, that's, I'm not sure. I'm not in female, female. female. Yeah, I guess guess the energetics, because this is energetics that we're referring to here. We're not, it's not gender. It's the energetics. Yeah. For a male and a female in relationship, I'm going to talk gender. It's gender. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in in that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go gender here. So, you know, when we're in that role reversal, our men become less attractive to us. They become weak in our viewpoint. They don't make decisions. They do whatever us women say. And that's a really, really shitty spot, I reckon, for us for us to be in relationship. And the thing here, which was the bittersweet pill for me to swallow at the time, like before I knew all about this and as I was learning about this, was that I used to do that. And I was in the masculine role and my partner was in the feminine role. And that's just, it's not attractive at all so how do we shift that balance if like how do we shift into balance if you're listening to this and you're like shit that's me which i've worked with a lot of people in this space and it's very common that that's what happens Mm. how do you shift this well you step back into your feminine energy Mm. what does that look like ali it means that you're not making all the decisions on everything it means that if your husband makes the bed and he doesn't make it as good as you do or as good as you feel you do that you don't say to him you just didn't do that well enough. Or don't worry about well, that. Or let me I've do always, it. Yeah, let me do it. Or if they do the dishes uh, and they don't do it the same way or they don't wipe the bench or they make a sandwich and there's breadcrumbs on the bench or they don't put the clothes in the right spot or they do the washing and, and the washing's not hung up right, it means that we're not judging them and treating them like kids. Mm. It means that we're not having this attitude of I'm better than you. Essentially, that's what it says. I make a bed better than you. I clean up better than you do. You're fucking useless. That's what our men hear. And and if you were doing that to a child over and over and over again, I'm not saying our men are children. It's just an example. If you're doing that over and over and over again, what do you think would happen with a child? They just go into submission. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to say anything that's going to upset you. They'll just do what you say. Yes, ma'am. What else? Yes, mum. Blah, blah, blah. What else? And that's what our men do. Oh, breaks my heart. Mm. That's what our men do. Also, our men, men listening, you choose that. You choose that. No one's doing this to you. No. You are in many ways choosing this. A hundred percent. By acceptance. A hundred percent. And so, so with this in like, I used to pay for everything. Uh, or I'd want to pay for everything. The number one argument that my ex-partner and I had was around who was going to pay for what because I always wanted to pay and I'd always drive to where we were going. I would just take the lead. I was constantly in the leadership and he would just go along with what I wanted. Role reversal. Now in the space that I'm expanding in, in new relationship, I'll give the keys. Like I hand the keys to my man and I want him to drive. I don't like to make all the decisions. Mm. I like him to lead. I used to lead in the bedroom. I prefer he leads in the bedroom and then, you know, I'll lead as well. Just not the same way anymore. It's that equilibrium that we just spoke about, you know, where we don't have to be all one way. You know, we don't have to lead all the time. We can, and you had this experience recently, Ali, where you were in your feminine and it felt so good to be able to hand the leadership and your mm. man led oh. because he knew you were in your feminine energy in your two weeks of feminine in your cycle you know we get to have these conversations with our partners as well and you know it's not about i I want this i want everyone to get here we're not swinging all the way one way or all the way with the other this is about knowing when you're in your feminine energy and having you know a partner that you have communicated with to know 
how to step in and step up and how to be able to, you know, because sometimes you do want to lead and sometimes, you know, it's just not an all or nothing thing. Yeah, it's that beautiful equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a balance in that. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Mm. That's just having the awareness that mm. where are you playing mm. in your relationship? And do you have the relationship that you want? Are you looking at your man going, man, like I just can't get enough of you. I don't care how long we're in a relationship for. I believe that it's sustainable for us to look at our men and just want to be bent over the kitchen. I'm looking at my kitchen bench. We just <laughs> want to be bent over the kitchen bench. Like we see them and we're like, I just can't get enough of you. Mm. Like you turn me on in every single way, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, the whole lot. Mm. I believe that can last. My heart gets flutters when you come into the room. Oh, yes. Mm. The ho- that can last. Mm. And it's like, what are we looking at in our partners? Are we looking at all the things we think they do not do? Mm. Or are we in? Are we saying thank you for the things that they do do? Are we... It's not submitting. And and it's not about roles as in the ancient times a woman just, you know, she cl- cooked and cleaned. It's not about that. Mm. And, and it doesn't mean the man's got to go out and work and pay all the bills. It's not about that either. It's just what's happening in your relationship. And if you're not happy with how it's running and you're not looking at your man or your woman with that kind of passion and that kind of desire, then something is out of balance or you, you just don't really want to be in that relationship. That's right. That's the, you know, there's the other piece, you know, there as well. It's, it's su- this is such a big topic. It's as you can hear, I'm so passionate about these teachings. Mm. This is such a like not even tip of iceberg. No, it's like it's a, a snippet. Yes, it's just a, a you know if we were to do a little spray bottle, it's just a whoosh, that's all this is. That's it. This yes, so many moving parts here on all of this, and I'm really excited for us to co-create on a program around this together, Jen. Oh my goodness, we talked. You know, I remember ages ago we talked about doing it, and it didn't. It just not the right time. Obviously, it didn't quite come through. And it just, I'm just having this conversation with you as I realise, and now it's like, now's the right time. Yeah, now it's like smash. And she's just like, how cool is it how she's just come and gone, now, now, now. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it. And we listen to that. Like Jen and I listen to that. We know if you were here with both of us, you would have heard us and felt us. Uh, we you we got see it. the goosebumps that are still like. Yeah, they are like, still in your legs. Still on me, all the way down to my little ankles. That's amazing. Yeah, and that's trusting the intuition. That's listening to the creative side. The queen, the dreams Mm. of the queen. And now that's a really great example, actually, the dreams of the queen. That was the dreams of the queen coming through that we felt. Now our king, the doing energy, we get to do the 3D version of that, which is bring it to life in real time in this world and create the Facebook event and blah, blah, blah. That's the masculine. But that's how it works you know the queen energy has your dreams has your guidance system and your masculine energy is the part of you that brings it to life Mm, so juicy well i think that will be part one of a six thousand part series (laughs) (laughs) yes tune in for this because it does this really does um flow into so many areas it flows into all of the things you know that we've been talking about on previous episodes it flows into judgment it flows into self-responsibility it flows into self-leadership it flows into forgiveness it flows into um inner freedom all these parts are all interlaced through you know, through our relationships, which is such a beautiful playground for our growth and expansion. Mm, On that note, see you on the next episode. See you then.